this is your announcement to go follow Dimples the golf ball. Or he's going to take out his axe <laughs> yeah. and come after you. Um, this is cloth. Do you understand that the golf swing is 90% hands and arms? It used to be. Like back in the 20s and 30s with Harry Varden and Henry Cotton and all these guys, they were saying that it was 90% hands and arms, 85 and 90. Where did that get lost? Like why? Why did we lose that? We are live. How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the Clause and Effect podcast, where we introduce the cause and effect relationships that exist in golf in relation to the hand to handle the club relationships. Uh, episode 11, we're shooting on a Monday, which is uh, kind of different, but it's football season. So, <laughs> podcast yeah. is second to the po- to football season because <laughs> of my <laughs> obsession with my fantasy team and. Uh, the Lions got a win yesterday. Yeah, so thank God. Thank God. That was really, really nice. Um, yeah, State didn't look that good on Saturday for you. Sorry, <laughs> Jonathan. State fan too. It's just like <laughs> My Michigan, but I mean, we played a pretty terrible team, but Michigan looked pretty good. But um, yeah, I love football season. I oh, love yeah. fall. I love fall. Like a lot of big things are coming for Claw. Like I'm moving, I'm moving back over closer to Jonathan, like we said in the last podcast. So um, just kind of organizing and orchestrating all that. Yeah. We're moving the studio over yeah. here as, as well. That's why uh, our claw code videos are a little bit delayed um, because we're moving everything over. So we'll get the, we'll get those over. To but they're going to be better just but, because yeah, the exactly. environment's going to be better. Be better. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be really good. Um, we, we got a lot of cool stuff coming. I mean, we're, we're going to be doing a lot of, we got our simulator that you've seen like in our past content. We're going to really use that a lot this fall and winter, like in yeah, the studio. Like we're going to sure. be um, doing like course vlogs and mm-hmm. um, we're going to have my student just, jacks. Like we're using yeah, go yeah. some playing lessons. Yeah, exactly. And, That'll be really yeah. cool. Those would be some good. Um, I actually, we got to, we got to schedule me and him to play. Yeah. We're going to yeah. do like a cool competition with me and um, Jax is really good junior player who's probably going to beat me by like five or six, but it's okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll try to get the competition going. And by the way, just a shout out to Jax. He, um, he wasn't extremely like pleased, but you know, he shot, um, uh, three over total for two rounds in the amateur at yeah. forest acres. Sweet. So, um, That's awesome. he took seventh place. So, you know, so would he shout shoot out. 73, 75, 70, 75, 72. Okay. Got it. Got it. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Very yeah. cool. So. Yeah, he's so good. Yeah, you said he's getting looked at by Detroit Mercy? Correct. Which is sweet. That's awesome. Yes. That'd be good for him. Yes. That's a really good golf program. Uh, yeah, shout out Jax. We're, and we by the way, Jax. he went double eagle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's he, he's we get rid of those doubles and he's going to be winning everything. Yeah, yeah, that, I like um, that though, yeah. But yeah, uh, shout out Jax. What's up, dude? Um, so yeah, we got, we got some exciting stuff to talk about today. We're going to talk about uh, Liv, uh, PJ Tour a little bit. Um, we're going to talk about just a couple more things just that we feel like aren't really being talked about enough in golf instruction. One of them being like, uh, the swing triangle. That's something that's not Mm -hmm. really talked about enough, Mm -hmm. uh, anchoring your ankles into the ground to support that swing triangle. Yeah. We're going to talk about that a lot. Um, and then, yeah, just talk about just, um, like how the tour players are doing these things that we're kind of talking about. We're not like making this up. You look at tour players. It's like, like we say, it's hidden in plain sight. Right. Right. So, um, yeah, we'll just talk about that. So yeah, first thing I guess we'll, we'll talk about is live. I mean, I, I mean, full disclosure, we support live here. I mean, sure. I don't know. We, we like both tours. We're just fans of golf. Like, I don't, I don't think We're it fans has of to the be players. Yeah, exactly. Like I, I right. love Cam Smith. Cam right. Smith is one of my favorite Absolutely. golfers ever. Yeah. Um, uh, I just like his demeanor. I like, I mean, how can you not like Cam Smith? I can see him being one of the greats and having Absolutely. a very long you know, exactly. career and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. um, yeah, watching him this week. I mean, I watched Liv more than I watched the PGA Tour just because, I don't know, it's just, it's more accessible for one. Like, it's on YouTube. It's That's easy for mm-hmm. me. Like, mm-hmm. I don't have Golf Channel or anything like that. Or, right. I don't um, either. Or CBS because I don't really have, like, streaming services or anything just because I don't really watch a lot of TV. Right. <laughs> um, I watch a lot of YouTube. So, um, so yeah, I mean, Cam Smith, he looks so good this week though. Like he, he, his putting is incredible, but one thing I really want to talk about with him just in his swing in general, um, and we've talked about his swing a lot with, um, how he's a little across the line, gets the club, like back on plane, pulls the handle left to kind of zero out the path. Slightly. But, yep, yep. uh, one thing that he does really, really well, and you watch him like when he's setting up to the ball and, and I'll pull up like a little visual, um, so people can see 
is that he gets his trail palm connected to his lead thumb knuckle. And you look at a lot of really good players, they all do this. Right. And I just wanted to kind of hear like your thoughts on like, why does he do that? The importance of it. Like, it's just such a, it's such an important thing that's not being talked about enough. And he does it better than like anybody. Like, what's right. your thoughts on that? So if we use the short club, yeah. you know, I'm going to go with a, a neutral grip just because that's pretty much what he does. So lead thumb is at like the two o'clock position opposed to like 12 o'clock being straight up and down. Mm. And then when he plants his trail hand on the club, the one thing that I don't think a lot of viewers maybe understand is mm. that when you place the trail hand on, you should bring it onto the club, like almost palm up in a sense, no matter what grip you're using, because when you interlock or you overlap, um, or you even baseball grip, the key point is the trail palm against the lead thumb knuckle. Mm. So when we plant these together, okay, we have a little bit of variance of where we can go with it, but the more that you get more towards the lead side of the club or towards the target, you know, this trail hand starts getting on top more and it might feel like you can push down <laughs> and impact better, right. but you're gonna also steepen side. the attack angle right. and it's gonna alter everything. So really to get on the 45, it's very important that we again, bring the trail palm on more underneath, plant it, and then when you pinch for like a neutral grip, the the V of the trail hand should go in between the trail shoulder and the trail ear. Mm. So, you know, again, not here. That's too weak. This would be too strong. If you get too underneath and you kind of lose your claw and you get it more in your palm, mm. then you lose control Hard. as well. Yeah. Then you it's can't gonna, radial. Then it, you're it's just... going to affect this trail shoulder too, mm. like quite a bit. So it's just very important that we unite those hands correctly. And then when you look at the tour players, when they get their grip, you'll see them commonly kind of like, like it's almost like it's it. almost like, like a molding. cat when it's like pawn it's <laughs> yeah. bad before it goes so it just like goes around and like gets the spot right, right, right. so it's like we're doing that to <laughs> the actual grip like because you're trying to get that that squeeze pressure with that trail palm against lead thumb mm. against the handle with all the knuckle pads so that then from there as you go back you can really feel mm. exactly where the handle's at within your claws so that's that's kind of like one of the key pieces to also like locking the triangle in place right too, right like let's well, talk about that the a little. so the trail um arm and shoulder um imagine like skipping stones like going like basically getting max like external rotation to where your palm mm -hmm. is facing the sky mm -hmm. and then trying to flick the stone on that angle that's how you get a stone to skip so the same thing with the golf ball with the 45 mm -hmm. is that you want that trail arm and hand more on like the 45 degree angle like this feeling wise to get that backward set mm. right. right. And then right. what the lead hand does is gonna control the face and the actual angle of the plane. Got it, got but it. But the trail hand's pretty much doing the exact same thing. So um, and the one thing we were, you know, gonna talk about with the tour players is all tour players, especially when they're coming down, like they get to the top, we'll say that the connection's very good, of mm. course. As they come down into pre-impact, post-impact, mm -hmm. um, there's some players that you might see the trail palm come off the club just a little bit, like but it's Phil because, like, like, like people well, like that. Jordan Spieth, Lexi yeah. Thompson, they have that just for a brief moment when they mm. strike the ground. Yeah. But then it like the trail palm reconnects, reconnects mm. exactly because it keeps pushing. Got it. And the only reason that their trail palm comes off is because the angle of attack in the path may not be perfect, mm -hmm. but I mean, that's why their divots may be a little bit deeper, got it, got stuff it. like that. But they, again, if they keep that connection continuing to push, the club keeps going through. If the trail palm completely came off with its connection to the lead Eesh. thumb and then the fingers take over, all of a sudden then it's like, that's oh, we're trouble. having a real, yeah, like yeah. we're going to chunk way behind it. Yep. It could be a shank. Like there's a lot of things, but again, it's this trail um, arm like is really the key to every aspect of your game. So when we go back to Cam Smith, mm. why he's such a good putter mm -hmm. and why his swing is so like, you know, we'll consistent. say solid and yeah. consistent mm -hmm. is in putting, you want your trail elbow to be completely pinned in front of your chest in a sense. Like, I mean, or connected in a sense, like in front of your rib cage, mm -hmm. right? Got it. So that way, when you go back, the, um, the shoulders are basically being like a pivot. And then mm. also it allows you to take the club more on a straight back path, got right? It, like it. if my hand is turn on top like this, this isn't going to work. I'm going to go out to in, okay. right? I could almost in putting, if you had your hand flat to the handle like this and went back, it actually would simulate a pretty flat plane. Got it. Especially so like if you have bigger grip and right. something like that. So when yeah, we yeah. do teach putting, we are going to explain how like the lead hand thumb goes toward in between the um, lead shoulder and the lead ear. Mm. And then the trail V goes in between the trail shoulder and the trail ear. <laughs> in the, the so alligator it's kind of arms, like a goofy right? grip in a sense, but it's almost feeling like your palms are almost facing forward. But what it does is it flattens your chest, it mm. flattens your shoulders, and allows you to isolate 
the like all the little finger pressures that we don't want in putting <laughs> right, right right we want to make sure that it's like you're just cradling this thing and just rocking it like a little baby got it like how how, <laughs> so, <laughs> how tight should the grip pressure be when you're putting i would say this approximately a five. a five but the thing okay. that people have to realize is that what is your scale right okay. like what your five might be is because i'm probably like a nine right now <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah exactly and <laughs> you if you're squeezing me. the baby too much even with the claws it's like, like then e everything gets tense with the shoulders yeah and that's going to mess up your tempo and your rhythm mm -hmm. which is going to affect your distance right got it got it so it's just important like when it comes down to the putting grip and then in the full swing just getting the clamps right so with the the full swing mm -hmm. again trail hands more on the side just like putting yeah the lead hand though is going to be either be like weak like we've talked with thumb, like at the 12 o'clock position with the lead thumb or two o'clock or approximately three o'clock for it. the grip, different grips. But with, with putting, uh, with putting though, I it's, actually haven't, I mean, honestly, like I've seen some tour players yeah. that have a pretty strong lead hand and yeah. then like, it's almost the exact same grip as their full swing. Oh, got it. Okay. So got it can work. It's mm -hmm. not that it won't work, but I feel like when you twist that lead hand, too much because it turns the lead shoulder inward mm. you can have alignment problems with your shoulders oh, getting like too close it, to it. the target and like you get your trail shoulder like lower than your lead yeah, shoulder exactly. which you really don't want in putting because then well i mean it, it might create an upward attack but like right. i just feel like it's more of the alignment thing mm. um because you. when this lead hand is turned more at target for putting and then trail hand like an arm same exact unity it's like these 45s mm. neutralize everything got it, got it. so okay. it gives you the best chance in nice sense or like in my opinion to be able to keep everything going straight back and through. Got it. And but, you look at like DJ, he does a really good job with that. It's funny how like their putting strokes match their like swing. Absolutely. Like DJ. So when he goes back, his mm. first move is he always sets the club back first. Mm. So in his full swing, you know, he basically just goes like this, like to the takeaway. Right. And then from there just maintains that pressure and stretches it out and mm. turns and yeah. tilts. And then in putting, he has this baby little preset. It's funny. If you look at him <laughs> hitting like a really short putt, like a one foot putt, mm -hmm. he'll still lever it like this and then just push a little. Right. That's crazy. But it makes sense because yeah. the putter head needs to go back of the handle. Mm. You don't want the handle going back of the putter head. Oh, if you do it, that, then there's going to have this weird like lag and kick too effect. Much, too much. And there's yeah. no way you're going to get a proper roll on the ball. I gotcha. I so gotcha. It's almost the same as forward pressing before you go back like Jack Nicholas used to do. Mm. Right. Jack Nicholas would always set the handle forward first and then go back. Got it. And I think that has a lot to do too with that trail palm being connected lead thumb it, knuckle. Well, it is. It's this. It's, it's this action with the radial pressure against the handle. That's how you get the leverage. Got it. But also, it's how you, again, keep your hands in, you know, unity. And that applies for everything, handle. right? Like, right. that goes, like, we talk putting. Extension is so important in the trail wrist. And radial like, as yeah. well, right? Like, right. just that trail hand claw. We have, like, three different things you can mm. do with a trail hand. You have extension, mm -hmm. and then you have radial mm. and ulnar. Those mm -hmm. are, like, in a sense, in a combo, yeah. I feel like. And then you have twist oh which okay got it got right it. Like so you're blending internal yeah you're blending okay. that appropriately with the lead hand grip type that you choose mm. so basically got again it. if you're going weak you know you're going to have less um twist right right you're going to have more of a just extension and then radio got it and then the downswing you actually might feel like you're twisting in a sense to get remember we talked about that with dj before how he gets to the top kind of vertical but as he comes down the key thing is that everybody has the trail arm and hand like pinned to where the palm is facing straight away at the golf ball, basically, mm, okay, right from their it. chest. Yeah. Like you have to be here at pre-impact. If you're like this coming in, you know, you're going to be, when you go to like push or you get like the, um, the lag of the club release, mm -hmm. it's going to naturally kick left hard. Oh, okay. Got it. Right. Okay. And so like, or if the arms is pushing away like this and mm -hmm. it's not staying tucked long enough, you're then going to have like an early extension and that can cause you to hit the heel. Got it. That's where you lose posture, but right. moves in too much. But if you get this properly tucked and then. The one thing we were going to talk about today, which is kind of a little sneak peek into the claw code of like how we control that gear effect model with the trail arm um, going from bent to straight, keeping the trail wrist cupped. Mm -hmm. And we're going to call it the one, two punch. Mm -hmm. OK, because if you think about it, um, like a one, two punch kind of thing is like working the arms and hands like this mm -hmm. as a unit. Right. So when you go back, though, imagine if your hands started off together like this. Mm -hmm. If you just flexed your trail wrist straight away from the lead mm -hmm. and then you let's just say we're going to let it twist all the way back like this. Mm -hmm. So we're serving the platter. And then from here, you're just going to allow the trail arm to go from bent to straight and go back palm to palm. So it's this. Oh, OK. And got that's it. what really impact like the whole swing, actually, is that's what it feels like with the trail arm in hand. Mm. It's like you might be a little more vertical with the weak grip or a little flatter with the twist with the strong grip. 
but when it comes down to it, we're all here and we're all driving that palm. And so it's almost like, again, if like the lead hand, let's say stays thumbs up, mm -hmm. we're coming into this perpendicular with the trail. So it's oh. almost making this like little box shape. <laughs> gotcha. And then when you drive it, then it's like everything squares and then it releases over. Oh, got it. Okay. Right. Got it. So that it's just sense. kind of a better way to think about the golf swing because people like are so that. caught up in all these like ideas of sway and turn, tilt and all this, but like this is it. And so when we talk about anchoring the ankles, mm. right, um, that's really like your foundation to be able to do your one, two punch in the best way. And then when we get into understanding how we're going to imagine like if this um, shaft is parallel to my shoulders, mm -hmm. we're leaning towards the target with our lead shoulder downward. Mm. That's naturally giving us like the steepness for the angle of attack. We need to hit down on the ball. Okay. And then when we pre-close the hips and shoulders, that's giving us the path to oh. work inside out. Okay, got it. Okay, that makes appropriately. Sense. Mm -hmm. And then that basically allows you to support your low point with all the dynamics that need to like basically that, um, you know, control it, which it. is angle of attack mm -hmm. you got swing path and face angle right i mean done. so if you can just like preset <laughs> them, them out of the set way. up with the body right yeah. then it's just up to the hands and arms and if they don't follow the role of like this plane and angle mm -hmm. like back and then like for we'll say in the takeaway to post impact then you're going to be able to then figure out like what you're doing wrong like if you get the presets right and take the face back and it's too shut mm -hmm. and you come to like come into impact and you're pushing down the ball's going to go really low left, low left. and you're going to yeah. chunk it probably uh -huh. or have contact. So it's like obvious. It's like, okay, now I need to let the toe go back of the heel a little bit. And I'll push down on like, in a sense, we're pushing on the trail side of the handle to support thumping the trailing edge of the heel. Mm. Right. Okay. So we drive that force into the ground and then the gear effect from the trail wrist staying cupped and the trail I'm going from bent straight that naturally will stop the handle at the right point and allow the face to release. Got it. And that's it. That's where the one-two punch comes in, is that the one-two punch really stops the handle. It's almost like right. when you said And when we say stop it, it's like, it's not that the handle just completely stops. It's being pushed forward. Mm. Like the, the force is being applied to the side of it are continuous. Mm. But the rotation effect and everything, and by the, like, think of it this way, because your trail arm um, is basically a certain distance away from your trail shoulder, if we're staying in tilt from the top, and if the trail arm goes from bent to straight, keeping the trail wrist cup, at the point where the trail arm gets completely extended, and let's just say this real quick too on that topic, if we're sitting in our chair drill, it's one of the best drills, mm -hmm. you go palm up, and then you just, again, just like hinge back, and then from here, if you don't move your trail shoulder, keep it pinned back in your chair, and see if you can keep the trail elbow in external, like the under feeling as long as possible, where are you going to reach perfect extension? Mm. I'm now back to like the center point. Now, if it goes to extension, it's right here, which is just past center point. <laughs> nice. So if we think about that, that's where this rotation effect happens. Got but it. again, it's not that the handle's going like backwards. Right, if right. that happens, we're screwed. That's when you're bad. Yeah, you're that, So that's, I guess, when we say mm. stopping the handle, it's just um, more of like an idea of like the handle's not moving very far laterally right. throughout this point, like mm -hmm. very small point, but the force is being pushed against the side of it are a lot. Got it. Right, right. Right, right, right. So, but that allows the face to properly release going to control the contact take the perfect divots you're going to be able to control the spin the loft trajectory whatever you want just by then technically setting up differently got placing it. the ball differently with the stance we've got like the preset combos mm. right and then like we'll say this like up to a half to half swing you don't really have to move and you can literally hit all the different shots with mm. like a sand wedge right right and then basically as you kind of lengthen up this if you lengthen up kind of how the club is kind of levering back of the handle, that's going to move you a little bit. If you're in the preset still, position you're the preset because position, you're already in that direction. So you're basically like, once you get preset, you get your shoulders, everything right, and then you get the proper kind of takeaway spot. Right. From there, that winding around you is what's just winding your body. But it's really like, for like you said, it's not conscious for like little like half shots. As you kind of go a little further, that's when you start. So you can to already that support full. the arms and hands right. where they need to go because you have the room, right? Mm. And then to create more room to go to the three quarter and the full to get the club back. I mean, really, when your lead arm gets parallel to the ground in the backswing, mm -hmm. that's about as far as you consciously ever have to think you're going. Mm. If you want to like hit the ball a little further, you can increase your push pull a little more. And then that will naturally look like your swing gets longer Got because it. the club head is moving a greater distance, but the handle itself Hasn't isn't really moving much more. I got it. I mean, we're talking like a couple inches. Got it. And that's why you see like some tour players, like they get to the top and we've seen this a lot where they get to the top and then like right at the last second, 
the arms kind of fold a little bit and the club comes back to him, but the handle isn't really like moving. It's right. just that little bit of those arms kind of pulling in and then they snap down from there. Right. But it's just like, it gets a little narrow. I thought. So the idea would be is, um, when we talk about if you want to make or hit the ball just a little bit further mm. from like your lead arm parallel to the ground position, um, you're, there's going to be again, a little bit more turn mm. like there should be mm -hmm. because that's where the width is still maintained, Got right? Okay. Like the, you have to basically turn while staying in tilt, mm. which if the trail shoulder is working in a sense, like back towards the target, mm -hmm. then you have all the, um, you know, room to basically keep the trail arm as wide as you need. Got so it. even if you get up to the top, like here's parallel to the ground, you get a little bit higher than that here. Then when you get that big increase, mm -hmm. you're going to be able to support it. Um, but again, the consciousness of how like much more you're trying to move is very minimal. Got it. It's almost like when you get from that lead arm parallel to the ground position in the backswing is if you want to go further, it's almost like you want to try to resist it with like your core mm. to try to create more of like an X factor, like Got a rubber it. band, right, right. Effect. The rubber band effect. Because right. if you just float like, you know, with no resistance, just turn more and then increase with the push pull in a sense, you're kind of losing that connection to the ground. And you're also losing that, like, tauntness. The tauntness, right, right, like, right. That's right, so, right. Yeah, so important. Absolutely. Like, you're kind of floating segue. for a minute. Right. And then you might get back to the tauntness and the downswing if you're, you know, doing it right. But Right. And that's it, something that's really not talked about a lot at all. And I want to, that's a good segue into, we talk about this all the time, is that tauntness is so important. And I love what you were saying with the presets, is that that is kind of the spot that everything is, like, stretching away from. And it actually makes it easier to get that tautness because it kind of like almost presets a little bit of tension to begin with to push away from. Right? So, yeah. So like if you imagine when we talked about how it's presetting, like when you preset your body, it's presetting your low point, right? Mm -hmm. Like in a sense, like it's giving you that positioning where you need to be to be able to get to at impact. Right. But because you're leaning left and pre-closing, it's almost like you're creating more tautness in the rubber band already. Right. Because right. you're already like, you're starting off where you want to be. Got it. Like at impact, opposed to if you start off neutral, mm. it's so hard to get the tautness because if you move lateral too much or whatever, like yeah. there is no way to stretch the rubber band. Right. Right. And it goes back a lot with what we talk about with like finger extension, right? Like yeah. if you get that handle just press forward a little bit, you're almost giving like your trail palm a little bit of a head start where it naturally gets your wrist into extension a little more. But if you start more neutral, you really are kind of starting with your wrist like this, yeah, which might give you the tendency like to go flexion. into like flexion. Right. Yeah. So that's why I always love with my students where I'll preset their handle forward because I'm presetting like that trail wrist to then just feel that push against that lead thumb knuckle and then from there, it's just like, boom, that's like the preset in the takeaway. Like we talk about with the handle being parallel to the ground, mm -hmm. but it just gives you such a better chance. Cause like we said, the average person, if they start neutral, everybody always says, Oh, start with the handle at the belt buckle. It's like, well, now you have to work so hard. Not every in club's going to be at the belt buckle. Right. Like <laughs> yeah, you have to work so hard in swing to get to the proper impact position it's like why not just give yourself a head start right well and once you understand the options and what can work then yeah. it makes more sense but um yeah back to the idea too that a lot of people don't understand how to start the club back mm. like what starts it does yes. it is it the body is it the hands and arms or whatever so if you think about the dj thing i'm just going to do trail hand only mm. um just to show this so he basically uses only extension so he just literally goes like this you can see the face actually doesn't change as far as opening or closing. Mm. It's just de-lofting. Got it. Okay. And then he stretches it, right? And then that's his move. He has a little radio. Mm -hmm. The other way is like if we have a strong grip, right? We want to feel like when we go back, we're actually utilizing more of the radio push pressure downward okay. against the handle like this. Okay. So if you notice, am I keeping the face square? Yes. yes. That's the key thing. Oh, okay. That's the foundational like start of the engine. Okay. If you're it. in a neutral position, it's kind of like a blend of the two. So it's here. Mm. Which is like Max Homa. Max Homa does this Correct. perfectly. Like Correct. he is at the takeaway. Perfect blend of extension and radial. Right. Like I think better than anybody. And then we'll say that if we go back to like DJ, once he sets it here, then again, he goes more radial up. Mm. And then like in a sense, ulnar with external down. Because he to has get to, to get pre-impact to back right? to square. Because like you said, he starts de-lofted. Like so we he said, has to like... this is the p key position. Got it. 90 degrees of external rotation with the hand and arm to where the palm can face perfectly flat to the sky. Because then you can control the loft of the golf club face at impact. Correct. If you come this in, is it, right. if you come in like that, good right. luck getting the ball in the air. <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly. So then if we go to like neutral and we'll say it's again, a little bit of extension 
and radial like this. Mm. Then as we go back, we're coming in, same thing, right? We're back still to square. Mm. And then there's impact. Right. And then if we go strong, it's here. So it's going to be more of the radial to here, then the twist. Yep. And then the gear effect will just snap it right back. Got it. Got it. Okay. Right. And the gear effect is all because, like we said, the one-two punch. It's the trail arm going from bent to straight. Yeah. Because, again, it. if you want to get this el the trail elbow as far pinned, like, underneath your trail pack, like, mm. into your ribcage as possible. Right. And then from there, as you, like, let the trail arm go from bent to straight, you're starting with, like, the under part of the hand. Mm. That's driving, the, like, the under part of the handle, which keeps the heel leading. Mm -hmm. And then the top part of the hand, like, the index finger is then going to turn down naturally because of the rotational forces, Got right? It. So that's then going to control the top edge of, like, the face. So that's why you see, like, with Gankus and a lot of these guys that I see online, they get their students into a presupposition where they'll get their trail arm and max external. They'll get flexion extension, like we're saying, like kind of like DJ. But then from there, they just teach, like, rotation and then just hold on to that. But they're not really talking about that, what the trail arm's doing from pre to post impact. Like, they're not talking about... Once you get this position, like, how do you release? Like, what is what's releasing the club? Like, how do you like? Is it rotation of the body? You know what I mean? Like, well, it is. That's what they're going to tell you. Yeah. Um. So I guess you know the best way about? to explain it is that, like, with George Gankus, like he gets his players to the top, and from the top, he'll tell them to go into like flexion with the lead wrist, mm -hmm. and then basically from there, you're trying to like basically like not let the club get too underneath, mm -hmm. and then just trying to like let it flop like flop down. Right, right. Right. Like, so imagine like you get to the top. It's like, imagine there's like a big heavy weight on the mm. trail side of the club head. That force right there is going to control the upper body to keep it in tilt mm. so that when the lower body clears, if everything works properly, mm -hmm. there is going to be that gear effect to get the release right. Got it. Okay. Okay. Um, but the biggest reason is because he's getting his students to understand this. Mm. This is the biggest thing. Yes. So Which there's I like. a lot of, di yeah, I mean, you yeah. have, if you don't teach that as an instructor, your coaches, do, I mean, your, or your students do not have a chance, right? Because right? Exactly. everyone, anyone that's ever been good in golf and it's been talked about like Ben Hogan, when he said he wanted three right hands. Yeah. Why? Because he wants to be here and hang on to it like for as long mm. as he possibly can. Right. 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 I gotcha. So it's just controlling. What's like, controlling the, like, how is the club kicking from there though? Is it just because it flops down and then that's like creating like a like a spring effect it's getting down the 45 right okay. like the shaft should be just under your trail bicep in the downswing like to stay on the 45 okay if it gets too, too in line long. with you get a little bit shallower and it can still work mm. right but it's a little bit more inside out got it but if you can hold that yeah i mean it's like then the body rotation everything will compress down and you'll release i just feel like Here you go. if You're if so i just feel like that if people can understand the post impact position better with the release it would make a lot more sense of what they're doing and why they're doing it. I think it would make it easier for them to stay in tilt too and really like be able to just control like the accelerating and decelerating of the body. And I just think it would be a lot easier to repeat, especially Absolutely. under pressure. Right. Like I look at my students that when I get them preset, get the handle forward and I get them into a good kind of set position here from there, I just kind of get them to pump, pump down. We can talk about the pump drill. Oh, That's a really big one, right? Yeah. Once you're pumping down and then it's just like, boom, stick the finish. And then all that energy goes there. And it's like, you're it's done. downward at the ground. You're done. Right. Just picking right. a spot. Like you'd always told me, you tell students to pick a spot on the ground. Like, can you expand on that a little bit of like picking a spot to try to like feel that one, two punch feeling too. Yeah. Right. So if you're hitting like a, let's say like a wedge shot, mm. um, you're going to try to hit basically about a half inch in front of the ball, but through like the inner quadrant of the ball. Yes. Okay. Like hammering the nail at the inside of the ball, yeah. like we said. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. if I'm hitting a driver because the ball's forward and I'm in tilt, mm. I'm gonna um try to basically try to drive the one two punch in the ground against the trailing edge of the face, approximately two to three inches behind the ball. Right. We've because about, yeah, of how right. the shaft bends because of the shaft yeah. flexing like this, and kicks then it, when it and it kicks back up. Mm. Like the shaft actually flexes like this mm -hmm. and that shortens the distance between the handle and the club head. So you'll actually never hit, never the, ground. hit the ground. Right. Exactly. Um, and then sometimes with like a fairy wood, if you want to make sure, you, you know, if you're having thinning problems or mm. something like that, um, you can try to thump about a half inch or a quarter inch behind the ball at the inner quadrant, mm. but just like focusing like your little arrow of focus of like where it is relative to the golf ball Got it. in your stance. And that's why like presets are so important because it almost like kind of positions that arrow to where it's, it's actually going to be, right? It's almost like if you preset and you saw like where that laser beam would actually be like pointing, it's yep. like, okay, cool. Now it's like proper position. It's 
it's like downward enough it's outward enough it's forward enough and then from there you just do your move right yeah exactly <laughs> yeah so right. it's a really easy way to think about it i like For that sure. a lot mm -hmm. um so so like we said we we watched um just to kind of segue a little bit and this is a really good segue because when i watch max homa like he won yesterday mm -hmm. uh won the Fortnite championship on the pga tour um which i didn't watch a ton of i just watched like the highlights he actually won he chipped in for eagle yeah. Danny Willett had like a five footer to win three putted from five feet and lost, which was uh poor Danny Willett, yeah. but it's okay. It's good to see Danny Willett playing good. Cause honestly, since he won the masters back, I don't know when that was, yeah, um, yeah. he hasn't done anything since. So right. good for him to be back at it. Hopefully he starts doing good again. Mm -hmm. Cause I actually really like his move. Like yeah, he's got actually swing. let's talk about Danny Willett a little bit. Cause he has a, um, I don't know how familiar you are with his swing, but he has a really strong grip, like a ton of cup in his lead mm -hmm. wrist. And when his one of his old tendencies that he had a problem was is that he got like too narrow at the top. So him and his instructors were trying to get him like a little more width. Mm -hmm. So he didn't have such an aggressive like gear effect because of how strong his grip was. Right. And I really feel like he's a good kind of advocate for the strong grip and the cup and the lead wrist because mm -hmm. that gets a lot of hate in the world of golf instruction. But Danny Willett is doing a really good job like with that. Like he is pushing He's feeling that, like you said, the radial. He's feeling the twist feeling, mm -hmm. and he just rides at the top and then just drives. And he sticks it. his finish good. He sticks it really good right. with perfectly locked elbows. Yeah, exactly. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. So I like Danny Willett. I mean, I've always liked his swing, and we're always looking when we like go through all of our testing that we've done of like who has a strong grip, who has a neutral grip. Danny Willett has a strong grip and does it perfectly. Like his locked elbows are really good. So I'd like to see him start doing good yeah, again for sure. because when he won the Masters, I was like, "This is, this is good. Like, yeah. I this is good for like the strong grip family." <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> we're, we're team strong grip. Uh, we always think the strong grip doesn't get enough love. Like, right. it's it's so like frowned upon because nobody understands like the pieces that have to be like combined Correct. with it with the presets and mm -hmm. things like that. Right. Um. So yeah, Max Homa though. Back to him. I really feel like he has like we talked about this a little bit when I was driving over here. He has like the most technically sound golf swing. It's just like, very it's just simple, very basic. Simple. Like he does everything. Yeah. There's not anything he doesn't do right. Um, yeah. I mean, all of his pin, like his takeaway is perfectly on plane. His transition from his takeaway to his half, three quarter, and full are perfectly mm -hmm. on plane. He doesn't overutilize his body. Right. He doesn't have any violent moves in his transition. His footwork's really perfect. He keeps his posture perfect. Yep. He anchored ankles is, really good he at sticks the setup. His finish nice yeah um his setup's really so, I mean, good yeah i mean there's nothing really in you know he chipped in you know in a sense to win so <laughs> yeah. but i mean in my opinion when you kind of have those aspects in your game that's going to kind of stem into your short game as well yeah and his short um, game's really good one of my favorite players was always luke donald oh, and i mean one of the best so short good. games obviously but like his tempo was just always so yeah. crazy and he never hit the ball real far but right. he hit it far enough to you know do some good and you know win some tournaments stuff like that yeah but um i saw him live at the rocket mortgage honestly a lot of every tour player i watched that day i was almost most impressed with him yeah he's because i could see move so how good. well he could like control his claws mm -hmm. and like he did a really good job of like his rehinge was perfect right it, it was is. really similar to like phil where he just didn't like move and just let the that's club, it like, he doesn't move rehinge much. right back right. up at him right um that's not really like talked about enough i think in golf instruction is like the rehinge, mm -hmm. right? Like, can you talk about that a little bit? Because I feel like when you look at guys like Homa and um, he has kind of more of like a modern swing where a lot of rotation doesn't really let the club rehinge back up at him, but we like more of like the rehinge kind of idea, right? Because it creates more of like the pivot point with the hands and arms. Would you agree? Well, the the rehinge is basically just used for like height mm. and maximizing, like recoiling, is yeah. the maximizing speed. move um like to create speed yeah but that's rehinge up and then snap back down yeah correct so um phil mickelson i mean really he does it really well the, mm. the thing though is that um based upon your grip type is going to dictate how much basically when you go back you stay in ulnar mm. and then like activate your radial Got it. and then how much honor you're going back into <laughs> which is why his trail handle comes little, off the club yeah right? feels a little bit more on the weak side he's actually gotten stronger over the years with his grip mm. um i think probably just to help him keep his distance you know yeah. as age but um yeah it's interesting with phil that again his honor here though in the takeaway 
matched always his ulnar perfect in the follow through. Right. Um, but he had that perfect increase move. Mm. And then when he came through, you ever watch a video of him? He basically just stayed in tilt from mm. the top and just snapped his wrist down and let him come right back up. Like he barely even moved his body. Right, right. That I mean, and that's really goes to show. I mean, yeah, he's a tall guy, so yeah, he can create speed, but yeah. it doesn't mean that like for people that are smaller that you can't do the same thing and still hit the ball far enough. Right. Same with Luke Down too. Like he he chose tempo and consistency over trying to hit it further. And he had a great career. And, right, exactly. Yeah. And he's just super consistent in that way. So I mean, that's how you can kind of shape your golf game too. You Correct. know, but what you have to though be abiding by the basics, which is our clock code. Yes. So, exactly. Yeah. Right. Pick your grip style. Pick like your preset combos. Mm -hmm. What trying what kind of shot are you trying to hit? How much time do you have to practice? How athletic are you? Um, if you're a beginner, you always start out with strong grip, right? right? Like right. always start out strong. Like if you're a beginner, like let's kind of dive into that a little bit. If you're a beginner, like where do you start? Yeah. Like, I would say always start strong grip, right? Mm -hmm. Like maybe learn like chipping first. Yeah. Learn the short game first. Like quarter what would you quarter do? Quarter swings first always. Yeah. Right. Just learn how at setup you learn like the basics of with a chip, your you know, narrower stance. Get the ball back in your stance more. The handle should be leaning forward to like almost the outside of your lead leg. Mm. There should be a little pre closing weight on the left side, I'd say probably 80, 90%. So it's like mm. you're really not like that's going to be your least movement move. <laughs> yeah, right. And so you just learn how, you know, you take the club face back, the toe should work back of the heel just a little bit. And then you drive the heel coming through and thump the trailing edge and you work on hitting shots, you know, five feet then 10 feet, 15 feet. So you just work your way up in increments that way. Mm. And then when you go to like a pitch shot, you just move the ball a little more, you know, middle. Mm. The weight's not as far forward, handle either. And then we're doing basically the exact same move. I got you. And then from there, then we work from a quarter to swing to then, you know, half and then three quarter. But I think too that one of the things that people overlook when they learn golf is you're you need to learn the arsenal of all the shots that you're going to be like faced with. So it's like once you learn chipping and pitching, then it's like, okay, well, what are the different types of chips and pitches that I'm going to face in a round of golf? Typically, got it, right. you've got buried lies, tight lies, uneven lies. You got sand, right? You know what I mean? All these things. So it's like, you should really learn those first. Yes. And before like you dive into the rest of it, because really, I mean, you could literally play golf with a half to half swing and yeah. shoot like in the low eighties, absolutely. like after a while, because right. consistency, it doesn't take much to get to that point if you're consistent. Right. Right. And you're not missing the ball. And then we build for distance with the longer swings. Correct. Exactly. But you're learning just like when you start out, learn just how the club works. Like learn yeah. and you can how see to, it impact how to too, like then. push against the handle. Mm -hmm. Learn how to push against like the trailing edge, the leading edge, right? Like you said, a big thing that people need to understand is what makes the club go back. Like once you have people in that preset position, how do they start the club back? Is it with is keeping it, the tautness? <laughs> it's the it's the pushing, right? Right. Well, it's remember, the, it's the for like DJ, it's more of like the extension flexion this right. way. Whereas with the strong grip, it's more of the radial push mm, blended with the twist. Got it. Right. Got it. So okay. that's basically the difference right there. But when it comes down to it, though, the face should be relatively square, matching the sternum in the takeaway, which we get back to pre-impact. It should actually mirror pretty close to the exact same thing for a strong grip the face will arrive at pre-impact a little more open than it was in the takeaway oh. because of the gear effect. Same with a neutral, but not as much. And then with the weak grip, that's where it's the exact same. DJ, so, DJ's club face, if you look at it at the takeaway, you look at it at pre-impact, and you look at it at post-impact. So if it's here, de-lofted, we'll say perfectly de-lofted mm -hmm. in square. When he comes through to post, it's the exact opposite as far as like now it's lofted point at the sky, but right. the actual angle of the club hasn't changed at all. It's uh, kind of trippy. And if you put a line on his back, it matches it perfect every point at those three points. Yeah. Yeah. That's why he's so consistent. Correct. Because I mean, yeah, if if DJ could putt, I mean he'd win everything. Yeah. Right. Like he well, I mean he, he kinda, talked like about yesterday. Points. I think he just yeah, I think sometimes like I've heard that he has a lot of different putters that he switches up depending yeah. on his like eye that week. Mm -hmm. Um, and I get it. I mean, putting's like it's harder the more you're playing golf, especially yeah. in competition, because you're always trying to get that advantage or that edge, and you don't feel like maybe you're doing <laughs> it as much. But yeah. when it comes down to it, though, it comes down to your move. And as long as the move's legit, then again, I think the putter that's going to help with it makes more sense Correct. of like which one to choose. And especially like that's got to get in his head too, because he knows how much more I feel like gifted he is than a lot of players out there. If he could get his putting right. 
I mean, no, oh, we all know how it goes. I mean, yeah. at some of my points there. in my career, yeah. like I've, been, I've hit <laughs> right. the ball as far as I've ever hit in my life. And then right. for some reason, my putting always seemed to fail me. And then when I would maybe not be hitting it the best, my putting seemed to be the strongest. Right. And it's just... Yeah, you got to give me a little putting lesson. I got my league playoffs tonight. Right, for, yes. I got in a golf league. My buddies convinced me to do a golf league for the first time ever because I've never really had time to do anything like that. Um, and you know, we got our playoffs tonight. So probably be playing like a 15 handicap and giving him like 15 strokes. So that's going to be really fun. But well, after going through uh, all this, it reminds him of exactly what he's got to trust. Yeah, to, yeah, so. exactly. Right. I got to, my big thing is I really just need to focus on my setup, just getting like my body in a proper position to support what I'm about to do with my yeah, hands. Yeah, get your presets if I right. Get too lean right, too mm-hmm. much neck tilt, then yeah, kind of toast. I, I need to anchor my ankles too. That's a big thing I need to keep working on. I look at my swing. I sent you that video the other day and I'm just still moving so much. It's like, stop moving. Yeah. I mean, it's uh. like literally, you know, it'd be kind of cool is if we had like <laughs> this idea where there was like a little stake like that went up just below like the um, bottom part of your calf uh-huh. and like it wrapped around and had a stake and through your heel it. and you had to stick your heels into the ground like that. We should do. Move. I like that. So That's a really we'll good come idea. up with that as a training We're going to come up with a bunch of cool stuff this winter. Yeah. Like we said, we like, have a lot of ideas already. I too. mean, we're we're full like fully committed to claw like this is this is gonna be a really big company um jonathan and i are busting our butt with it um and with our studio we're gonna have this fall and winter we're gonna be doing a lot of cool stuff like um coming up with new ideas to just help you guys like that's all we really want to do we just want to help you guys play better golf um that's why we have our discord that's why we're gonna do our first like nft launch so then that gives you kind of more access than you would normally get um, to like private discords and a one-on-one lessons with us. Like right. this is just the beginning. Like we, we're just kind of going through like phase one right now, but I'm excited for the studio though. Yeah. And it's gonna be close. It's like what, two minutes from yeah, here. It's exactly. Yeah. yeah. So that's going to be, it's gonna be really nice. Um, it's gonna be kind of like kind of a theme of like Clothoria too. So that'll be cool mm-hmm. just to kind of introduce people to that world. Um, we'll have our little like dimples, the golf ball jumping around. Yeah. Right. If, you haven't went and followed Dimples the Golf Ball on Instagram. This is your announcement to go follow Dimples the Golf Ball, or he's gonna take out his axe <laughs> yeah. and come after you uh, because uh, he's really cool. He's like our mascot for Claw. Um, we have, I mean, really like the club face and the golf and uh, the golf grip handler and grooves are also part of that family too. Correct. Um, not just Dimples because they're all kind of like working as a team. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be a really cool story that we're going to start telling. Yeah. And everybody Comic just books. go, go yeah. check out our content on Instagram. Yeah. Um, like our th- stuff because we have a yeah. lot of information on there. I don't know if a lot of people realize yeah, it, but exactly. if you're any golfer funny of art. all time, like honestly, like are you been playing <laughs> golf for a little while, even like a new golfer, like it's funny though. Yeah, it is. It, we're, it's relatable to like <laughs> movies and stuff like Castaway and back to the future. Yeah. Stuff like that. So um yeah, yeah we're, we're creating relatable. like a story and yes. really our last thing right now is we just need to grow him a little more uh-huh. and that's really like the last thing we need to really pop because yeah, we we've got our comic this. book and everything mm-hmm. um pretty much done so it's like it's exciting we can launch all these things for you guys just gotta grow yeah, them. yeah exactly we just gotta really i mean now that people are starting to understand kind of once we start like introducing the story it's all going to tie into everything that we're talking about right. like the story isn't just some like random story it's a story about the claws and how there was this world that they had the claws and then now they've lost them, which is kind of like a metaphor to earth right. <laughs> when they used to have the claws back in the twenties and thirties um, in golf. And now it's completely lost. And here we are trying to bring it back. Yeah. just like they're trying to bring it back on this world and this world's kind of chaos right now, um, which is kind of a metaphor to golf instruction. Cause like we said, golf instruction's kind of broken. So mm-hmm. uh, yeah, a lot of cool stuff coming. We're super excited uh thanks again for all the support we've been getting it just means yeah. it means the world uh we hope it's helping um if there's anything that you need help with in your game join the discord let us know in the comments if there's anything you want us to kind of talk about in the podcast but um yeah we're just trying to help people out and so yeah. uh thanks for listening guys uh hope this helped you um we'll see you in the next episode yep thanks